The National Universities Commission has given approval for the establishment of two universities by Lagos State. The approval was given for the University of Science and Technology, which will be located in Ikorodu, and the University of Education, which will be located in Ekpe and Ijaniki, Executive, Executive, uh, Executive Secretary of National Universities Commission, Professor Abubakar Rashid, said all of this, and the approval was given in confidence that Lagos deserves more tertiary institutions to meet the needs of thousands of Nigerians seeking a university education. As you can see, his question is, are we not too ambitious? And that's why I'm smiling. Life, it's about ambition. Life, it's about the audacity to believe and to share in a vision that they are committed with. Lagos today, you say, is the center of excellence. Lagos today, you say, is the melting point of our country. Lagos today is the fifth largest economy in the whole of Africa. But unfortunately, Lagos today has only one state university that was given us to, to us 39 years ago. You can say that how come it's taking us this long to realize one, right? But when the time is right, the time is now. And so we're happy and we did be very audacious that we can come to NUC today and pick two brand new university approvals for the people of Lagos State, of that state that all of you call home. And so it is not that we're being ambitious, is what is proper, is what is right. And we thank NUC for giving us this today. The two institutions, you know, they were legacy institutions that are there. And so even for us in the last three years, we've been investing extensively in the institution. In fact, one of them, if you must know, have almost 60 PhD lecturers there. 60, as we speak, one, one of them. And so it's, it's not a place that is, that is greenfield. They are like brownfields. They are existing institutions that have infrastructure. And we're developing additional infrastructure. And we'll wrap up those infrastructure aggressively in the next couple of years. And it's driven by our vision as a government, right? It's there in our economic agenda, education, and technology. So it's not something that we just fell in overnight. It was something that we thought out. It was something that we, de we, we knew our people deserve. And it was something that we planned in the four years that we're going to deliver on today. And we thank all the stakeholders, the House of Assembly, all of the various communities where these institutions will be cited, you know, and all of our other players, you know, the, 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 the private sector who are in, you know, looking forward to this. All of the schools, over almost 20,000 schools in Lagos that are in private institutions that are looking for teachers, teachers in science education, teachers in other curriculum of, you know, of, of education that have university degree. That's, those are the market where, that is the ready-made market that we're trying to fill, right? So we're excited, we're proud that we can take this back home today into Lagos. And joining us now to speak on education in Lagos is the Special Advisor on Education to the Lagos State Governor, Tokumbo Wahab. Good to have you on Newsday. Now, in as much as this is a very welcome... Good to be here, Awa. Uh, in, in a, yes, uh, and in as much as this is a good and welcome uh, development, there are those who are criticizing uh, this current move, that it poses uh, a danger for the nation's educational development and that it also poses a danger for teacher education development in the country. Do you agree or do you share the same thoughts? Um, I think the governor has spoken about that. The time is now. You have a 22 million population and growing by the day. You have just one state university and your state university with a limited carrying capacity, maybe 10,000 or 18,000 applies to LASO. LASO can only admit 10% of that, that applicant. So what happens to the backlog? They go back home. And then here you also have colleges of education that have become a bit moribund. Moribund by policy that are apparent to every one of us. Let me give you the example. You write JAM, you write UTME. The best students are admitted by the universities. The second best to the polytechnics. The leftovers are now given to the colleges of education to train them to become teachers for our children. That is one. Two, Lagos as a state is talking about the 21st century economy. The 21st century economy means people that are educated enough to teach our, our pupils across board the states. So for me, it's something that is well thought out, well planned, and the time for it is now. Secondly, you have HND graduates. You come to a public service, for instance, with your HND. You have a ceiling. Your ceiling is level 14. 
Meaning, you have to go and do a conversion with your HND. In a place like last week, you spent six semesters, three years, for you to exceed level 14 with your HND certificate. Meaning, you are stunted in your growth. Whereas, your peers, your contemporaries, with university degrees, come into the public service the same time with you. They rise through the ranks. Once they leave you behind at level 14, they get to level 17 as directors, and possibly palm sex. So I think it's something that is well thought out, and the time for it is now. Well, I would like to ask you about the issue of funding. You know, can the Lagos State Government adequately, you know, fund these new universities, provide the needed infrastructure, learning facilities, state-of-the-art equipment, you know, and at the same time still make sure that it is affordable and accessible to Lagosians? I will tell you yes, and I will, I will speak to fact and data. As we speak, in the two colleges of education annually, there are subventions about 5.5 billion annually. Meaning that you train, and the student population combined is about 4,210. 4, Meaning you spend about 550,000 to train one graduate for NCE certificates. So the issue of funding has never been an issue for us as a state. Be rest assured, they will be well funded. And there are provisions for these two institutions in the 2022 budget um, signed by the governor to law. Uh, talking about with these two new institutions, is this enough to address the large education gap we have within our state or even larger within the nation? Yes, they are meant to address the gaps, meant to give our, our students, our citizens in Lagos platforms, options, access to quality education. And that's what we seek to do. Now, the state government is working hard to boost the educational sector in Lagos State, which is very commendable. But what about the issue of job creation or entrepreneurship you. development? You know, what, what measures are being put in place to ensure that these students upon graduation will be gainfully employed? Thank, thank you very much. Nice question. Should government be the employer of labor? I'll tell you no. But government can create the enabling environment for citizens to be well employed. That's what we do in Lagos State. Meanwhile, as a state also, as a policy, we have what we call, through Mr. Governor, the Job Initiative Lagos. Job Initiative Lagos is meant to teach soft skills and entrepreneurship skills to our penultimate and final year students in all our tertiary, including federal and private tertiary in Lagos State. And in two and a half years, we've been able to teach through that system 60,121 of our penultimate and final year students. Now, we also give them access to the LSCTF, Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. So if you want to be an entrepreneur and you meet the criteria, we'll give you access to that platform for you to assess the funding. Okay, so let's uh, talk. And let me also, let me okay. also add this. Like the governor said okay. earlier, in Lagos State, we have 20,000 plus private schools. That's a ready-made market for those that are going to graduate from the University of Education with B.Ed. For in Lagos, for also, for instance, we are trying to be audacious and we are almost at the end of implementation for our rail projects, the blue line from Marina to Okoko, the red line from Oyibo to Alagbadu. They will need skill sets that can help them carry out this infrastructure and maintain them. That's where science and tech university comes in. And it becomes also an innovative hub in the region and the states. Look, let us, let us be very factual. A state like Lagos, the fifth largest in Africa, in economy-wise and size, cannot have just one state university. Minimal carrying capacity. So the governor has been ambitious, and I know he's just edged his name in platinum. Lagos will never forget him. All right. In as much as we talk about, you know, the tertiary education uh, in, uh, in Lagos, uh, let's talk about primary school education and also uh, the um, out-of-school children that we have at the moment. I mean, it's bordering on the lines of 10, 10 million or more. Your comments? It's very, very distressing and very sad that we have that number of going out-of-school out of children and they, are, they, they, they will become a major security risk. So this cannot just be addressed by a state like Lagos. Yes, Lagos is a victim of its own progress. So what, what I can say is, as a state, we are expanding the scope of access, and we don't want to leave any child behind. That's the policy of the governor with respect to out-of-school children.
Tokumba Wahab, always good to have you on the program. Thank you for joining us and explaining all of that to us today.